Hi, Lucy. Hello. How are you doing? Good, Sorry, thank you. my uh, camera in position, which is balancing on a cup. <laughs> <laughs> mine's balancing on my laptop too. <laughs> good, good. Oh no, mine just slipped. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Oh, perfect. I'll move a little bit. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. This is. Uh, the next one in a series of Instagram Live conversations that have been organized by the East Meets West um, Masterclass program participants. This evening we have artist Lucy Turner joining us. Uh, my name's Stephen Burke. I'm the project producer for Grain, uh, and we are one of the organizers of the Masterclass program. Just to quickly just introduce the other elements of the program. So, uh, it's also organised with our partners Format and Quad in Derby and the programme is supported by Arts Council England, Birmingham City University, Derby University and the New Art Gallery Warsaw. Um, and yes, this evening we have Lucy joining us, who's one of this year's participants. And we've had 15, 15 participants this year. And basically how the Masterclass program runs, we have a, a series of workshops where we invite industry experts, artists, photographers, curators, picture editors to give advice uh, and to run workshops with the participants. And if you want any more information on that, you can visit the Grain website or the Format website or look at our social media. But I will start now with Lucy, who is our guests for this evening. Um, I'll just give everyone a quick introdu introduction to Lucy and then we'll start the conversation. So, Lucy Turner is a photographic artist based within the East Midlands. Her practice is informed by the family album and the archive, particularly how this kind of photography contributes to our understanding of contemporary society and the stories we tell about ourselves and who we are. She uses disruption of the archive and performance of the album as a way of exploring past histories, both personal and non-personal. So Lucy, thank you for joining us. Um, is there anything that you'd, you'd like to add onto, onto that, that short description that I've, I've, just, I've just read of you? Is there, do you want to tell us a bit about how you kind of got started in photography? And I suppose particularly, where did your fascination with the family album and archive begin? Sure. So um, I started studying photography at GCSE and A-level um, just because when I was younger, I always liked taking photographs and video and kind of making media content. So it just kind of seemed the natural thing to do. Um, but I probably didn't take it very seriously until my last year of A-levels when I realised I possibly wanted a career in it, but I didn't really know how that was possible mm -hmm. so I decided to do a BA in photography and I did that at Coventry University and how was that how was your time in Coventry very good very good okay. a really good course um I probably would say I didn't really realize my interest in the family archive until my second year so it was in around 2016. I did a project called 87 Years Young. And um, I worked with a lady called Winnie, who was 87. And I met her at a local church group they put together for elderly people in the area that lived alone. Nice. Um, and she was just talking to me about how um, her husband unfortunately passed away. So she lives on her own and she's also going through the process of losing her sight. Mm. But she was really kind of open in discussing this. She really kind of wanted to get her story across and having conversations. Um, so at first I wasn't really sure where kind of the project would go or even if it was a project. Um, but I ended up going to her house every Sunday for about four months and just kind of fitted into her weekly routine. Um, I always thought it'd be a project, kind of looking at our conversations, um, the difficulties she faces living alone whilst losing her sight, um, which I did do, 
but during that process it became really clear to me how important her family photographs were to her even though she couldn't always see them yeah. if I kind of briefly described what I could see instantly she would tell me who was there where they were what they were doing a background story behind it her house was is still covered in photographs um so that became kind of our weekly routine every sunday we'd sit down and learn all about kind of her family history which mm. is something she really enjoyed and i think that was the first time i got a kind of interest in the archive or the album and it's possible kind of cathartic or therapeutic use yeah definitely and also um you just made me think i think it was earlier today that i i, I saw uh, this quote which i thought was a really ni nice way of describing family albums and archives there's almost time traveling devices and people can kind of yeah time tra travel through not only their lives but their you know families lives that you know gone before them and yeah i just thought that's a really the power of photography yeah. um even though you know you know these pictures might be hidden away or you know under beds or things like that but they hold such power and also such social importance as well you know to wider society not just you know to the individual how much do they say about you know how we've all you know how society has changed and how we how we live our lives but you kind of took the kind of your exploration of the archive and the family album to a kind of next level, didn't you? You didn't kind of just represent or kind of, um, yeah, you, you kind of interrogated and yeah. used the family album and the archive as a starting point. Do you want to talk a little bit about your grandma and the projects you, you kind of, uh, you worked on that, which is really a fascinating and brilliant project. Thank you. Um, sure. So during my time at university, I studied abroad for a year. Um, I went to the University of Lapland. <laughs> and when I came home, I was kind of putting all my things for the year just in the loft. And I just stumbled upon this kind of mass amount of images, albums, um, old passports, birth certificates, newspapers. I can't explain to you how much stuff I found that I had no idea we had. Um, and it was about my grandparents. And that's kind of the side of the, my family before this project I knew very, very little about. Um, and this was the first time I never thought about using my own family photographs. I always thought um, I'm really enjoying doing workshops with other people's, but it kind of felt a little bit like a this kind of treasure trove that I found. Um, so I just used that as a way to get to know my grandmother a little bit. So I just started with exploring the images. So using the whole image, the background kind of locations, visiting there, visiting beaches that I could see they were in, um, and really just kind of researching into everything. And it turned into a little bit of a process of, I guess, me trying to build a relationship with her. So the first stage of the project I created was called Processed with Care in a Modern Laboratory. So I found an old album of hers that had a few photographs in, but most had just been ripped out. Um, I've got it here, actually. And I, it's a brilliant title. Where does the title come from? Where, it, where did... it came from within the images I found. They were in the little slips um, of where the photographs got printed. And a lot of them, the kind of slogan on them was process with care in a modern laboratory. Ah, nice, nice. That's <laughs> great. And again, it's talking about, you know, that whole photographic, you know, the process and the experience of yeah of you know people did used to go and take their you know their their films to the lab and yeah i suppose you'd want them to be treated with care wouldn't you because you'd take yeah. probably exactly. most people taking images of their family their loved ones you know they wanted to know um 
yeah, it's a it's a really nice slogan anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I created this kind of physical object out of the album. Um, there was a few images already in it, which I kept in. I didn't take anything out. Mm. And then I digitally manipulated a few just to kind of show this process of, I guess, me getting to know my grandma just through kind of this. So I layered images. I don't know how well you can see it. but yeah, they look good. That looks good. So, so you never met your grandma, had you? I'd met my grandma twice, but when I was very, very young. And my granddad, he died quite a few years before I was born, so I never met him. Cool. So it's about, the project was kind of about, yeah, creating a relationship with them. And again, that idea of using the photograph as a way of travelling and, yeah, but, you know, exploring the emotional resonance of, of you know what that holds for you and that relationship yes yes exactly um but in this particular project i think when i'd finished this album i wasn't completely satisfied with that i think it reflects kind of the getting to know process but i really wanted to kind of physically build a relationship if that was possible through the project and the images so um that took me on to the next stage which was adventurous cooking and again so what do you want to let people know what you found out about you know your grandma's life and how that i suppose influenced the your response to the archive or to the album yes yeah, so um a lot of the photographs were just kind of your typical family snapshots and things like that but amongst them there was about 10 to 12 images of my grandma in a television studio they were kind of behind the scene images so you could see the lights and the setting um, and she was baking I had absolutely no idea what she was doing um, and I again researched into the images and found out she was a cooking assistant for Fanny Craddock Wow, so, so good. Yeah, that's where the kind of staged images came from. And what kind of, in what ways do you, did you respond? I'm just looking on your website now and there's, you know, so much good work. And one of, I remember myself and Nicola, who's a director at Grain, for, for people who don't know, visited your graduation show. And it was one of the standout works for us, definitely, especially the the films that accompanied the, the work as well of you of you of you kind of making these recipes, which I think was really great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so I um found she was kind of cooking in a lot of the images these same biscuits, and I found um the Fanny Credit cookbook with the exact recipe in. Correct. And because my last project, I didn't really think I had kind of built this relationship. I changed it and did a kind of performance of the album. Mm -hmm. So I documented myself um, actually physically baking the same biscuits as she did to kind of help build that bridge a little bit. Yeah, no, I think it's really great. And I think, you know, the way you've kind of also edited some of you know, the images and marked them, and yeah, I think it's a really strong and great response to 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 your grandma and kind of finding this relationship. Um, but yeah, fascinating as well, just to just to have been, uh, you know, yeah, with cooking royalty, which I think is a, a that's just coming just coming. But if people do have any questions for Lucy as we go, please do drop them in, and uh, we'll, we'll come to them. We'll come to them as we go. I mean. Where do you see yourself go? Do, do you feel this project is finished or are you still kind of, or do you see, you know, the work that we'll talk about soon that you've been working on the East Meets West programme, which is kind of a continuation of this, but do you see yourself, you know, always kind of looking back at the archive or your family archive and looking at, you know, ways to respond to it or, yeah, but what's your kind of thoughts going forward with this with this project? I think in the near future, yes. I think um, the project we'll talk about in a little while and this, they do have a link 
I think I've just not quite found what that is. Um, but I definitely, at some point, want to link them together. Um, because they tell such different stories, but it's kind of telling one whole one, if that makes sense. Mm. And I think, yeah, it's very much telling a story of that time as well. Um, and, you know... I mean, maybe you should, you should, yeah, maybe we should talk about it and then we can, we can talk about the links be between the projects. If you want to introduce the project that you've kind of been working on, yeah, it's part of the East Meets West program. Okay, so um, it's definitely a work in process, so it doesn't have a name as of yet. <laughs> but um, it goes back to kind of all the imagery I found. Um, I had a few of my grandfather's things in there, but he didn't have a lot of things. Um, there wasn't a lot of family photographs with him in, um, but there was a selection of photographs from Southern Gas advertisements and a selection of photographs of kind of the formal um, photographs taken of the marketing and advertisement team of Southern Gas. I've got a few here. I yeah, do you want to show some? Yeah. So these are the kind of formal photographs of the team behind the images. Lots of men, lots of yeah. white boots, <laughs> having nice dinners together. Yes, it's and definitely a running theme. <laughs> yeah, wow. Wow. And lots of nice moustaches as well. Yes. <laughs> And um, then I found the advertisements that these men had created. So <laughs> there wow. some, they do actually all are trying to advertise um, gas heaters. Mm. Although you probably wouldn't think that was the main focus. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. So, so much, you know, just the juxtaposition between those images of the men around the table and, the, and you know, the women as as props, basically, aren't they? And kind of, yeah, it says so much about that time period and advertising and, you know, um, yeah, it says so much, it says so much. Yes, exactly. I was a little bit cautious about um, possibly using them in a project because mm -hmm. I think on their own they're say like you said they comment on so much and obviously I've got this personal link to them um, so when I started especially with Eats Me West I just started showing people the images yeah. and I noted it was really interesting most people's first response is to laugh but it was kind of a uncomfortable humor about the images that they laugh, but it's a bit like if these were shown today, obviously things would be so, so different. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that was kind of my first thought. I wanted to kind of play on this uncomfortable humor that these images mm. kind of evoke. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, that idea of the, the kind of uncomfortableness. And it's, it's something, it's almost, we're being shown something that we're all very aware of and yeah. that, you know, to a lesser or greater degree, you know, is, 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 is still taking place, but, you know, it was prevalent at the time and yet it's uncomfortable truths, aren't they? Yeah. As a, and it, yeah, they're, they're reflections of as a, as, a, as a society, aren't they? Exactly. And so what, so, have you kind of, so with your grandmother's pictures, you responded to them in a performative way. Did you do that with these or what was your, or yeah, have you thought about responding to them in any way? What kind of, what have you been, what have you been thinking and what have, it, what have you been doing in response to these images? Um, I've definitely thought about that. And I think going forward, that's my next step. Mm -hmm. um, I think recently, especially during maybe my last year at university, um, I've realised my method of working and all my work is really kind of process and research based. Yeah. And whatever the kind of end result of a project would be, it's always kind of a big reflection of that. 
So I've spent a lot of time researching. Um, I have been in touch with the National Gas Museum and they've got a huge archive, um, mm. which they've been really kind and have let me have full access to. So I'm still in the mm. process of working through it all because there's a and lot. What, of yeah, I'm sure. And what kind of, what kind of things have you been finding in there? What have you, yeah, what's, what's kind of come up? I've um, particularly looked at kind of the same time period, so 1950s to 1970s, as that's mm -hmm. when I know these images were from. Yeah. Um, and very similar images I have found there. And kind of as they've progressed, they, I guess, have become less of women in swimwear and more of women standing next to electric cookers. Okay. And things like that. Interesting, interesting. And are you able to kind of scan these images and take photographs or take photographs of them? Are you able to use them or are they just kind of just viewable? Um, there's a select few. I am able to do that. So I've scanned in all of those and I've nice. also kind of done a public call out. So I've got a selection of images. Um, I've got a few here, actually. Right. Just of people's photographs featuring these kind of gas um, heaters. And are you still looking for those? If anyone has any that, that's watching, what should they do? How should they contact you if they've got any pictures of gas heaters? <laughs> um, just contact me through Instagram. That would be amazing. I'm still trying to collect and get um, as many as possible. Great. And what, where do you, do you see... So you, so your granddad who's in these gas pictures and your grandma who's in these cooking pictures, they, they were your, they were married, correct? They were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, do you see those archives blending together or responding to each other? I mean, there's something, yeah, there's something just about your grand being, you know. A, TV cook or assistant, you know, almost almost playing the role kind of, but in a different way to these to these models and these pictures kind of. Do you, is there, do you think there's a connection to that or? I, or I think so. Um, I wasn't sure just because if, um, if I think this because obviously I've got a personal connection to both of them. But what I find quite interesting is this kind of amazing career my grandmother had. Um, that was kind of in her late teens, early 20s. And as soon as she got married, she gave that up completely, became a housewife. And then during that time period, my granddad was part of creating <laughs> these images. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's really interesting. Yeah, I think... Um... And also what's great, because obviously the images are so strong, they're such good photographs as well to begin with. You know, they're professionally done, they're really high standard. Um, yeah, they're such a great source material to work from. I mean, what would, what did you kind of get back as part of the, the kind of the programme in terms of the advice that the kind of visiting uh, artists and photographers and writers and you know curators did you get anything that, advice um during the reviews that you've kind of you're taking forward at all or how did you find that experience as well definitely um i think i got something from every speaker we've had um particularly i would suppose Colin that came in to discuss writing um, he has made me completely rethink how I write my artist statements around kind of personal work like this and to kind of break down this kind of need for almost academic language in it and to make it more personal because that's what this works about. For sure and yeah no definitely and I think it is so personal and, you know, it's very accessible work as well, which I think is, you know, is a really important thing. It's something, you know, like we were talking about that kind of uncomfortable truth. It's something that we all recognize, um, which also is so intriguing as well. You know, 
you know, we can all, even those those adverts seem quite shocking now, but really there's some part of you that, you know, we're not surprised that we're seeing those images. We're not surprised those rooms, you know, of the board are all men, you know, of a certain age and they're all white and they've all got a moustache and all, all wearing the same suit. We're not surprised, but we are surprised. And it's that kind of, you know, that tension, which is interesting to explore. Do you want to, so, so since leaving university, um, you have, so one of the projects that we're going to talk about as well is the project you've done as part of Living Memory, which is, which is a commission that you worked on straight after finishing university, which is amazing. And to be part of such a great project and shout out to Jeff Broadway for bringing all of that together. Do you want to talk a bit about your kind of, about living memory in general and kind of your involvement with it and, you know, your experience of applying for things after leaving university and, you know, get, you know, getting that first commission, which is brilliant. Sure. So um, I was really lucky at university um, during our final year. Well, during all our years there, actually, they kind of really prepared us for applications and things to do coming out of university. And mm -hmm. I think the East Meets West Masterclass really, really helped with that, too. Um, but for the Living Memory Project, I was a bursary artist and all the bursary artists got given an area and we kind of had free reign of who or what we wanted to work with in that area. Um, but the basis of the Living Memory Project is to celebrate the history of the black country. So I was given Oldbury and I worked at Rams Green Library with a over 65s friendship group that is held there twice a week. They run kind of coffee mornings. They do so much. They do murder mystery days, um, pancake days for the kids on pancake day and, and stuff like that. Um, but the main focus is to help these kind of elderly people that are living on their own to just have conversations, get out of the house, get talking. So I thought it would be quite interesting to see if they wanted to do a couple of workshops where they all brought in kind of different parts of their family photographs. So um, it turned into a bigger thing than I thought. We did that kind of once a week for about four months, wow. um, just looking at all their photographs, uh, which was amazing because they were all kind of brought up and bred in the black country, but kind of dotted around different areas. So I started leading the workshops and kind of starting conversations, but very quickly they completely took over and I just joined in with the conversation, which was great. Yeah. And I think what's really interesting about that is kind of taking your personal practice and the way that you've kind of explored your own family album and then starting to open that up and the process of the conversations and speaking to people about their kind of experiences and their albums I think is you know is a really interesting step change in your work and creating more opportunities for you to kind of carry on making work really which is always good for every artist and photographer to find multiple ways of uh, ways of working but how did you how did you kind of bring all of those you know conversations and um, the images that you were discussing with people how did you bring that all together and did you work with the participants to bring it together or was it yeah do you want to talk okay. let us kind of work together so um again it was a very process-based project the kind of final outcome for the participants and the main outcome for myself was just the act of these conversations. Um, a couple of the members of the group are suffering with Alzheimer's. So they were speaking to me about how instead of just being at home and looking at their own family photographs, being around other people's and seeing other people's and kind of physically discussing them helped paint a much clearer picture in their mind of things and their past which was really really nice to hear 
but I kind of I did document photographs kind of of the workshops but mainly of kind of just looking through photographs or their hands and things like that and I collated a kind of photo essay um really about this kind of cathartic process we went through together um I used a lot of quotes from the participants and then they've helped me kind of I showed them kind of quotes I was interested in using and my photographs and they showed me kind of which photographs they thought met which quotes um, because there was supposed to be a finishing exhibition this summer but obviously due to the current situation it's it can't go ahead yet um, but they yeah they were a big part of the whole the whole thing really. Great great and I think you're so right about you know the process is as much the outcome as you know any exhibition or book and i know is the text included in the book in the living yeah. memory yeah 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 so if people are interested in the living memory book they should head to uh search living memory on instagram or on uh google and have a look at the website there's also a book you can buy, which I think has got a hundred or so stories of people who live in the black country and their lives and their personal album pictures. And it's, yeah, it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant project and really super engaging with the participants. And as Lucy said, you know, the process is so much as important as, as any outcome. Do you feel like, you know, that experience um, do you think you'll carry on working in that way? Are you looking for other opportunities like that, or are you working on you know anything at the moment that's kind of with people, with communities, uh, in a kind of socially engaged manner? Do you see, do you see your practice moving forwards like that? Definitely, I think um, I'll always do kind of my personal work. Um, but I really, really enjoyed kind of doing workshops like that. And I think that's definitely, whilst I gain more experience over the next few years, that's definitely something I kind of want to work towards and almost um, just kind of starting these conversations with kind of different groups or different communities or people, purely because during this process with the living memory, I probably learned so much more from them than they did from me. It was a really kind of fulfilling experience, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's very two way, isn't it? It's, you know, it's, um, yeah, participatory projects. Yeah, they're very two way, they're conversational. And as you said, you, you as the kind of artist or workshop leader, whoever you want to describe yourself in that moment, you know, get as much from the participants as, uh, as much as that you can give give to them as well um what are, talking of the future what are your kind of future plans going forward i think were you going are you starting an ma is that right well i was supposed <laughs> to <laughs> um <laughs> i'm on the ma for photography at the university of west england Great. that was supposed to go ahead this september but they've actually um, postponed it for now. They've postponed the course just due to everything that's happening because I think for them, face-to-face learning is quite important with this course, Yeah. Um, which it is for me as well. So I'm quite grateful that they've kind of postponed it till that's possible. And when have, have they said when it's likely that, will that be in January or will it, you know, or do they not know? Hopefully January. Um, I think they just have to kind of see how things play out over the kind of autumn months. And then the worst case scenario would be next September. Great. And that's a great course as well. And there's so many great people coming out of it and great tutors. So I think, yeah, you're going to get a, a really great experience. Are you going to, are you going to move down to Bristol? As um, well? I'm going to see because it was originally two days a week but they might have to do partly online, part face-to-face. So I'm going to see how much time um, we are going to be at university. But I think Bristol is such like an amazing city for photography and art at the minute. So I'll definitely be spending a lot of time there. Great, great. 
Does it, if anyone has any questions for Lucy, I know we had one before from Emily. I'm just going to go back to it. And I think Emily was asking about what's the reaction um, from your family to, to the work? You know, how do they feel about it? Um, they, it's my mum's parents um, that I'm looking at. And surprisingly, she didn't know that much more than me. It was kind of... Um, she found out as I went along the project um, she didn't really know about her mum before she was a mum she didn't know this kind of career she had beforehand um, and she knew obviously her dad worked for Southern Gas but didn't really know what his role was um, when my grandparents passed away she kind of packed up their house and she's never looked back at the photographs or anything that we've got yeah. so it was kind of just as much a discovery for her as it was for me. Yeah, great. I think that makes it almost even more exciting, doesn't it, to find, you know, these hidden treasures that if, you know, if your mom wasn't aware of them as well, it's really, you know, it's a real uh, journey of exploration through, you know, through the albums. And I wonder, you know, how many, how many stories are hidden of people's families up in attics where, you know, old pictures are just... Uh, hiding away I think yes yeah, it's, it's uh, a really fascinating fascinating and um, we've got another question from Verity are any of the people in the gas company images alive have you contacted them it'd be interesting to see their thoughts on it have you have you explored that at all? yes so I have um, tried to there's the National Gas Museum and a National Gas Archive so I have scanned in all the images and the information I've got and sent it over to the archive. Um, I think they're in the process of looking through to see if they can find names. Um, but there was a bit of an issue with GDPR, whether they could yeah. actually give me those details or not. But I know they're in the process of doing that. If I could get in contact with anyone, that would be incredible just to kind of hear firsthand rather than putting kind of puzzle pieces together that I'm finding out as I go. Sure. And I, just going back to um, the Adventurous Cooking Project. So I know on a few of the images, you've kind of treated them in different ways. Um, do you want, could you talk a, a bit about, yeah, why you, I think there's some that are kind of you've painted over, I think. What, why, why did you do that? I mean, aesthetically, they look great, but what was the kind of, you know, what was sure. the process behind it? So um, I've got a few on my website up now that I can just show whilst I talk about it. So um, in things like this, um, this was a photograph of my grandmother, and she, um, this is the road she lived on. Uh, okay. And it was also the road where this photographic studio was on that this image was taken. Okay, nice. So in kind of early parts of the project, I have kind of used those to kind of put pieces together to work out who she was. And then I recreated my own. So this is kind of a behind the scenes image of her cooking. And I've kind of recreated that myself with a photography studio and the biscuits I made and paired them together <laughs> and things like that. Great, great. No, I think it's such a nice project. And I think, you know, like we were saying, just, It'd be really interesting to see how these kind of projects kind of form into each other and, you know, what that again says about society at the time, the role of men, the role of women. And I think, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's really strong work. And as I said, you know, we saw myself and Nicola saw it, you know, a good couple of years ago now and I can I can still remember it. So, you know, it's 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 really good stuff. I mean how how have you found the East Meets West program overall? Has it kind of been what you thought or has it been different? Has it been better than you thought? Has it been worse than you thought? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, it's definitely exceeded all of my expectations. I think I was a little nervous at first, kind of coming into it straight from university and seeing all these other amazing participants that have done these kind of incredible things. Um, but it's been really useful, actually, as a kind of bridge between coming out of full-time education into the kind of real art world, which is quite terrifying. Um, <laughs> but it was a really good bridge. I know Emily, who was um, also on my course at uni, has said the same. It's kind of helped us ease us into it a little bit. And the other participants, I've learned just as much from them as I have from all the amazing speakers we've had. Um, and they've really helped as well, kind of practically with things like applications, um, portfolio reviews, how to actually make money from having kind of your work viewed, all these things that aren't necessarily spoken about a lot, but are really important to know. And I think that's what I found most useful out of the whole thing. Great. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, especially like so when you finish university and you're like, okay, God, how do I actually, you know, go about meeting people, talking to people? How do I, um, yeah, it's just kind of, yeah, meeting people, I think is, is, is quite daunting. And, but it's also such a big part of, you know, how you realize about opportunities, how you find about how you should talk about your work, how you find about, you know, how do I price my work and things like that? We've got a question here from Nicola. Um, you have such rich family archives that are full of interest and intrigue. How do you feel about working with an institutional archive one day, i.e. a library, a trust or a foundation? Okay, so how do I feel about kind of using my family archives within them? No, I think it's more how do you feel about, let's say... Let's say Kew Gardens have, you know, an archive, I'm sure, of, you know, photographs of scientists and flowers and things like that. Would you ever be interested in kind of looking at something like that to respond to? Definitely. I think um, before I found this work, I never saw myself looking at my own kind of family photographs um, anyway. Um, but since doing kind of the workshops and seeing other people's and when I was studying in Lapland, I studied fine art and cultural studies. And the cultural studies aspect was um, we looked at kind of the art history of Lapland and Finland and saw an amazing array of kind of archival imagery based around that. And I would love to definitely kind of be involved with working with other people's because I think when you work with your own you see things in a slightly different light and you possibly make different artistic decisions on it because you've got this kind of personal involvement but with something completely different um you have a completely different mindset in it which I think is really interesting 100 percent. I think that, yeah that's a really good point about yeah when it's your own family you're so invested in it how you know would you make the same decisions if you had in, in, no emotional investment into this, you know, to the to these people? You know, how far would you push it, or would you treat them in a different way? And I think, um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, do you, how have you know, as part of the East Meets West program, you've all been working together? Do you want to talk a bit about the process of that? Um, what you've all created and how people can find out what you what... yeah so um we our end result was going to be a physical exhibition which we ended up not being able to do because of um coronavirus so we have kind of adapted that to we've made a website with all our work on it we've made a publication and we're doing kind of artist talks like this, um, a series of artist talks. Um, so we've kind of, over the last few months, had to kind of get our heads together and work out how we can reflect all our work and everything we've done. So all the information is on the East Meets West website. 
I know all their Instagram lives, so these in conversations with are all going to be uploaded on there too. Um, we've got our publication now. Looks good. And um, I think they are in the process to being sent out to people that wanted a copy of it. But we've also got a few left. So I think the idea is when we do the photo cafe in August, um, if people are in that, there's possibly an opportunity to get one, I think. Great, great. That sounds good. And what's the name of the website for people to have a look? It's eastmeetswestphoto.co.uk. Great, great, great. Um, and if the, has anyone got any more questions? If not, that might be a, a good place to finish this evening's talk with Lucy, which has been brilliant. And, you know, as I've said along, all along, you know, your work is really, really great and it's really strong. And it's going to be really exciting to see where you develop it. Not only your, you know, the personal family archive work, but how you engage with communities and people, and you know, having these different strands to your practices, you know, it's going to be really beneficial to you going forward, and you know, create more opportunities. And yeah, and I'm sure you'll be able to get into some interesting archives going forward and make some really great work in response. And I really hope that, you know, the MA goes really well and I'm sure it'll be Thank great. Thank you. Had so, much, so many good things and so many good people coming out. You know, it's a, it's, it seems like a real great place to be at the moment. But yeah. thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'm just going to quickly let you know what is coming up. So tomorrow, where are we? Tomorrow we've got uh, Mark Hobbs talking. He's a great photographer based up in Manchester. He's going to be talking about his work. And then Sunday, I'm going to be back talking to Marley Starsky Butler about his practice. Um, brilliant photographer, musician, artist, filmmaker, all round uh, creative guy, which is going to be really fascinating. Um, and as Lucy said, you can find all this information and also the you know other events and activities and the website and the publication um can be found on the east meets west instagram and website but i'm going to leave you all there and um, thank you again lucy brilliant to see you thank and you. thanks everyone for joining us and we'll see you soon thank you goodbye Bye.